Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusaders of Might and Magic. Everyone's favorite. And that bot over the entrance to the catacombs looms. Alright. This update is going to be mild in comparison to some other ones, I shall say. We are going back through the catacombs, backwards. It's a new perspective on the level. One of the better levels in this game, I feel, as I might have said before, very atmospheric and such. At times, when I'm not explaining stuff, there's going to be some new stuff in here, but not too much. And I will go silent for maybe slightly longer periods than people might be used to. So you might enjoy the music or something. But yeah, there is going to be something fun about this episode. Because, I mean, uh, I've recorded it already, I know how it goes. And I do know, and I did know beforehand, that there was a little thing... A little gimmick to this update, you will see. It appears on the transition between this level and the next, which is pretty soon, actually. But yeah, as you can see, a part of this level is taken over by the dwarves. I tried to do a creepy little thing, which probably would have worked if I wasn't talking all the time. Uh, it worked on me the first time, because I neglected using the torch, and I walked through that darkness, and then I heard a swing of an uh, axe, which didn't happen this time, sadly. But uh, then I realized that in that sheer darkness the dwarf was waiting for me, so I ran into the light and uh, out he came, struggling, struggling, that probably not even a word, whatever, strolling and something else, which sounds like eggling or something, it might be the source of the second word of that combination. Anyway, gonna go clear out the palace from the dwarfs, I don't really have a good reason to, there isn't even much loot there, just a couple potions, but just, I guess, completeness sake, and I do want to see these places again because I like them, as I said before. Might be not the prettiest, not the most detailed in the game, but definitely, for me, one of the better ones, uh, one of the better locations, because just something about it is very atmospheric. Especially when I'm not using the freaking torch, this guy is just shivering in fear. Let's show him that it is completely justified. I don't know where this guy came from even. Oh well. Thankfully there are no earth elementals or whatever those were in the prisons here. Just a couple dwarfs and a chest this time. I don't think it was here last time. Chests are one of the things that can appear and disappear obviously between different versions of the level. And that is the lesser healing potion. I think our first. I am not sure how much exactly it heals, but it heals less than the normal light green one, which is already at this point really underwhelming. So yeah, be the judge yourself. But yeah, I I just don't know. There's something... There's a lot of games that give this strange feeling, fantasy games. Thief 1 is one of such games. And this one, of course, and probably some others that I'm not remembering that easily. Uh, but there's just... I guess the Might Magic series in general is just awesome with atmosphere. And then in this game, maybe in large thanks to the music. By the way, I'm trying to lure that guy. Yep, because there's people around the corner there. And I want to not disturb them too early. Because I want to deal with these guys first. Okay, gonna lure that guy. These guys, I think, follow you when they see that they cannot actually shoot you. When there is no, like, line of sight. And they try to get close, which is kind of smart. And when there is line of sight, they will sometimes try and stay wherever they are, because, well, I mean, everything's fine, they can hit me just fine, so why move? And I guess in that, they are actually smarter than some other games' enemies, like Sears Sam enemies, Doom enemies and such. Then again, those are action enemies and meant to attack in groups, so that probably is completely justified. Alright, let's head to the overhead, those rooms above the prisons, you know, those rooms. Of course you remember this entire location by heart. What am I even talking about? And yeah, we are putting our hammer here to good use, by the way. They are actually able to jump and climb sometimes. Woohoo! Wow. They kind of suck at it, but I guess maybe they're just having as much trouble as a new player would with this game, because it doesn't have the best jumping. It's not as bad as Blade of Darkness, but it gets kind of clunky. And that was me going silent for a while, just for the sake of music, there is a chest there. For the sake of music and atmosphere. But yeah, I think this game, well, there is just something, some quality to these huge... ...kind of slap, 
slap what lazily half acidly made levels but you kind of can feel some intent behind them from the developers like it doesn't feel just like some random absolutely random crap it's like there are some ideas and uh, they are kind of a mystery so these locations kind of feel mysterious because of that kind of like well I mean this is fantasy so whatever this is some sort of tomb or prison or combination of such you kind of feel like there is an ancient mystery behind this place which you are not quite qualified to understand. And of course there's the music and such and maybe there's a heavy dose of just uh, nostalgia because I played this game as a kid by the way. Halbert, I used to think that you couldn't really get this weapon too much but now I know that I'm mistaken it's actually kind of shit and damage as you can see but um, it's kind of fun and I'm not going to use it I'm just gonna throw it out actually right now. But, uh, I mean, because it costs like 50 and nearly everything else that we'll be bringing to the next merchant is going to be much more cost effective. Jade Ring of Thought. I believe that will increase your intellect and mana with it. But we don't really need that too much. I wonder if you can play this game using a lot of magic. Probably on easier difficulties, because on the hardest difficulties, offensive magic is kind of shit. Well, most of it is, actually. Some of it is useful. Okay, this maneuver here always works. He always hits the floor without fail. What an idiot. Alright. Just some healing potions, greater ones. I already have like 31 of them, that's cool. And uh, combined, those potions cost more than I have money, even though I have been collecting very carefully. I wonder how many potions I will be able to afford at the last merchant before merchants disappear from this game forever because at this point at that point I mean there is no point buying anything else but the health potions okay and this is going poorly that guy managed to throw me off the ledge it wasn't going as planned of course now let's try and see how it should have gone another case of the hop he decided to hop but turned around at the last second just because there was no reason to hop I guess now that is how that should have gone Anyway, dropping down there. Thankfully, there is no three Earth Elementals there. Earth? Yeah, I said it correctly this time. Holy shit. Uh, nothing here, I think. I'm just looking here. Nope, nothing useful. The loot disappeared. And yeah, there's just a bunch of skeletons. And this hammer that we bought last time in the Dwarf City of Karantha is really helping because it kills normal ones in one hit. The mages, mages in three hits. Dwarfs in two, I think. The lesser ones, at least. And up there where the book was before, now there's a couple more dwarves, and those are the stronger ones, so I will need this heroism if I want to dispatch them with more ease. Actually, I'm gonna kinda suck, spoiler alert, I'm gonna get slightly beaten by the first guys. Because if you mash attack, mashing attack is kind of a bad idea in this game, usually. I've just not even yet still gotten the grasp of how to get Drake to do just repeated attack like so. Instead of like, I mean, well, that was a spell, of course, yeah, duh, but I mean, you can kind of swing a hammer repeatedly in that same way without doing the combos, because some later hits on the combos are just pointless, you miss with them, usually. And yeah, I know I have to take two hammers there, because I won't be able to fit more. With all the fucking artifacts that I'm gonna be collecting. Um, yeah, let's drink that laser. What, did it like four health point points, I think, it returned? Wow, talk about useless. Uh, and I love this place. I don't know, just something about this whole area is so cool. As I might have mentioned like thousands of times, I enjoy, I immensely enjoy huge cavernous areas like caves and such underground when they're big and open. And that thing is just atmospheric as hell. But anyway, what was I even saying? Something about something. And there's that one guy there. Nothing else but him. Not even going to go and bother with him. I was definitely saying something, but I forgot. Hmm. Oh well. There's a new type of enemy here. I think we haven't seen these yet. Maybe we, we might have. They throw these, like, cloud acid balls, which are pretty much recolored fireball that I have because they're kind of homing. They make the same sounds, the same effect. They might, ha like, have dark damage instead of fire damage or something. But it's not like it matters for me. They don't actually do that much damage, thankfully. And this guy drops a whole bunch of loot, including our gimmick. 
Let me browse what I have. Potions, shield, uh, fist of necros, 10 GP, but it does good damage. And boomer axe here. Now, this thing is cool. Boomer axe, what do you think it does? Let's equip it. And I will demonstrate. It's a very fun weapon to use, but not very useful. You can throw it, and it behaves kind of like a razor wind from Turok 2. And it turns to you no matter how, where you are, or whatever. But, as I said before, mushing is bad. You shouldn't mush attack when throwing, because Drake will just take out another weapon if you press attack, and that axe will hit him straight in the head, because he doesn't have a free hand to catch it. And that is hilarious. And I love it. Ah, yes, I remember what I was saying. There's a art of sorts to mashing the right way, which I still don't know what actually makes it work. But something makes you do just repeated normal attacks, which is useful. And something makes you do combos. I think that I had some other point to make, but now I forgot it, and nevertheless, just doesn't matter. Uh, boomer axe in action. The trick with the boomer axe is to position it so that it uh, tries to go through the enemy when it tries to reach you. So it like you throw it behind the enemy, and uh, since it goes like left and right on the turn, you throw it to the left of an enemy, and it does shit like that. And it's immensely satisfying because it lands a huge lot of hits. Like it is not as powerful as our normal weapons at this point, but with how many hits it can deal, like combos, man. And just the sound of it, like... It's so cool. But sometimes you kind of fail. The best I found is throwing it from above. But sometimes you just have to kind of, like, annoy enemies like that. Of course it's still good, because it doesn't let them actually, like, attack you, and you don't need to approach. There's a couple situations where it's useful, but I will not actually be using this axe after this update. I might keep it and not sell it. Just in case there is a fun opportunity to use it later, somewhere. Uh, but... I will be using another weapon, which I will buy in the next update, actually. But yeah, this update is going to be... The rest of it is going to be all above the Boomer Axe. Uh, it will have its ups and downs, ups like that. And downs kinda like that, when I completely fail to hit any anyone with it, and that guy is shooting me continuously. Good thing the lightning doesn't do any fucking damage at all. But when it works, it freaking works. I love this thing. It's a silly, and uh, this is a very good situation here. It's not very dangerous. Enemies aren't quite strong enough for me to be afraid, sufficiently afraid of them. And uh, whoa! Um, and yeah, it's just a good little bit of fun. Crystal Ring of Force. I think I'm going to take it over the Vigor. Because if I'm not mistaken, it might increase my damage output instead of my health and I mean come on a pro like me doesn't really need increased health even though I kinda came close came, came, come, came close to death a couple times here but uh, well you'll see and I have come close to death a couple times already by now in this let's play in general like some of the situations with the dashers and the ogres and whatnot Yeah, let's just kind of hop across this open big room in the catacombs. I found a funny thing. Oh, by the way, I think this is going to be good. It might, it might be good after a couple tries here. Let's see. Wow, yes, it was good. Whew. Okay, so yeah. Uh, one funny thing I found when pulling off these pillars in my test runs is that they actually um, aren't like straight completely straight, they kind of became, become narrow and narrower and narrower to the bottom, to the point when they just kind of come to a single point at the bottom, by the way, sped up for your pleasure. I don't know why I even mentioned the pill's shape, but it's kind of funny, I thought. And yeah, the elementals here, they're actually kind of interesting to fight with the boomer. well this one not so much because he just kind of falls like a moron but they are obviously bigger targets and it's much easier to land the multiple hits combo of sorts with them also they are actually living creatures so I will be doing some soul drink on the next ones I meet because I want to top off my health but 
spoiler alert, it doesn't really work in my favor too much because these guys, they possess the speed necessary to just kind of run up to me and fuck me up while I am pretty slow and I'm backing up like so you can see he just kind of hits me. And yeah, I think I didn't really think of soul drink at this point, but I will after killing this guy because he damaged me and I decided, yep, and I decided that I need my health back. Also, they just something about them blowing up. Not as a result of your direct hit with a weapon, but as a result of that axe drilling them in the back. It's just, there's something satisfying, uh, deeply satisfying about this weapon. Now there go the soul drinks. Soul drinks are cool. Neat little way to restore some health when you have living enemies. There are going to be some living enemies. I know I said before, I think I mentioned the vampiric shield and the, maybe a blade of hunger as well. Um, those are tools that let you take health, but only from living fall falls like the the spell here and uh, the blade is complete like it doesn't do any damage at all and it gets you like one hp per hit so it's useless in combat for restoring health or anything but uh, oh well and the shield it kind of gives you slightly more per hit but still not too much uh, so especially considering that after you find them the only living enemies left in the entire game are going to be, I think, these huge giants which you want to kill fast with spells preferably and uh, shield is useless against them because they are big and hit you from above so that's kind of funny how they position those artifacts, at least on the hard difficulty, maybe on easy they are earlier in the game but on hard, when you get them you can only use them to maybe like drain some life out of an immortal and uh, really chill shopkeeper who doesn't get aggroed or doesn't even stop servicing you after suffering a lot of damage some of it mystical in nature all right and there is a lava elemental here whoa and i still kind of suck with my soul drink but yeah soul drink is actually out of all the vampiric stuff is the good way to get some health because it's actually draining uh, a good amount per spell and sometimes you just aren't using magic much you know like sometimes you cast uh, heroism as much as you can Wah. but sometimes you just kind of don't really do that and forget and you have maximum magic and it's a shame to let it go to waste by the way there's going to be a lot of sucking trying to hit this guy because you see how the boomer x flies around him because of its pattern so i sped it up here until the satisfying conclusion. Boom! I was almost panicking there because he could have done quite a bit of damage on me, but he was one hit away from death. So yeah, soul drink, good. Other vampiric stuff, not so good also, I'm looking, yeah, I heard the sound of some item dropping and it was this speed potion here. And there I pressed the wrong button because I completely forgot which button picks up stuff and I drank a greater healing potion healing one health point in the process so that was quite a waste but well can't do anything about it now not going to re-record the this section of the level just because of that oh well I still have like a complete like excess and I will have a complete excess of health potions by the end of the game I don't really need all of them that I can buy for the final fight I just like to have it it's tradition also sometimes some places X just doesn't want to fly through, like the, the arc here, before the skeleton mage. I don't know why, maybe it's a glitch, maybe it's just some invisible shit there, which would be a glitch I guess, so I don't know. Music, music, music. I like this place, There's just, it's just soothing and atmospheric, kind of mysterious. Ah, I think I talked about it enough. Let's fight some skeletons. Interestingly enough, often when there is a group of enemies coming for you, they will form this formation when the closest to you is slightly to the right of the center in front of you and the second closest is slightly to the left of the center in front of you and uh, it's like a perfect formation to use the axe because you throw it at the second one, which is slightly to the left and after hitting that thing, that enemy, the axe will uh, ricochet and fly slightly to the right and he's to hit the other one and it's just fun, fun for the whole family. 
Yes, I think I will be keeping this weapon throughout the game because there are bound to be some situations where it's going to be a lot of fun. I can think of a couple where there's going to be groups of enemies again and I can probably uh, get by just running around them without getting in danger because they are melee weapons wielding enemies and just throwing my boomer axe in the middle of all of them and hearing all those hit sounds in the crowd. That should be satisfying. There's another ranged weapon later in the game, but it's complete and utter garbage. I will of course show it off, but uh, I don't think I will be using that. Although I, I I have never even I tried. I think it does like next to no damage, and you can, can't really use it. But I have found out things about this game that I hadn't known before during this let's play. The the, the biggest of which actually is going to be featured in the next step that updates. So get hype. But yeah. In my preparations for recording, I might actually discover some hidden power in that other ranged weapon in the game, but that's all for the future. Also, um, the barrel here, I remember this one barrel actually has money in it. All the other barrels so far that I've been ignoring, they have nothing. And barrels just kind of stop having loot in them in this game after the beginning. But some of them just still have some stuff, like that one. And that's the benefit of actually rehearsing your episodes like I'm doing, because I'm professional. Okay, I don't know why I selected the hammer there, somehow. And here I clicked slightly too early. Thankfully the, ha the axe didn't hit me in the face, but I still took out my hammer. You can use some of the number keys to switch some of the weapons, but I'm not actually sure how it determines which weapon in your inventory is which. Maybe just like position from top to bottom, from left to right or something, because I think it uses only three keys, <coughs> at least, or maybe four. What I know is that I couldn't select my axe when when I got it, with how many weapons I had when I got the axe, I would not be able to select it just using the number keys. But it is a possibility, there is this little control thing that you might have not actually expected out of this game. And uh, I'm not casting torch because I enjoy the light show. The boomer acts for some reason glows purple. And of course there's sparks when it hits. So it kind of looks slightly spectacular. And I'm demonstrating how actually, how for some reason it's cooler to throw it from above. I don't know what is it about the trajectory, but something just works better when you throw it from above. And now, out of the fog, the dark black fog in this place, that entryway slowly fades in. Cool. Despite how badly this game is made in a lot of aspects, I think there are some things that it can teach if you want to do atmospheric stuff. And I think it might be doing it accidentally. But it doesn't change the fact that there is some stuff about it that just works. And I think out of the three games that I'm let's playing right now, it might be not my least favorite at all. I don't want to name which one. I think Blade of Darkness might be least favorite because it's just like the, the most cumbersome to play. And uh, something just about it is the most boring out of these three games. Rune is just a joy. And this one just holds a lot of sentimental value. By the way, here is a cool place where the Boomer Axe comes helpful. Before I had to fight all those guys up there, there is a lot of guys and they will fuck you up severely. But I found that you can drop down here and uh, lure them all down. You can just escape I guess, but they might actually climb back, believe it or not. They can jump when they want. And you will, whoop, like there one goes, just kind of fucking flew up. There was another I think. And if you look between those platforms to the left or to the front right now, you will occasionally see enemies just kind of flying up. Woo, like that. That's them jumping. Woo. Wow, yeah, so yeah. They can actually jump. And I wonder how they actually decide when to jump, because... You know when you do pathfinding... You do this some sort of navigation mesh, but I guess maybe the older games didn't really need navigation meshes, because everything was simple, but... Usually, today, I think you normally place spots where you intend people to be able to jump to and from 
like specific preset positions for jumps at least that's what it, I think it was like maybe either in Unity sometime before when I was reading manuals or maybe in Unreal Engine 3 in UDK or whatever there have been of course universal pathfinding algorithms but I'm just wondering how it works in this game I mean do they just kinda guess that they could jump up to you or do they determine by your positions are there some preset places for them Woo! Wow, that guy cannot jump. Oh, there's another. These guys jump worse than I do. I am. I should not be yes, because that guy can now reach me. Should not be attacking the guy in the bottom there. Woo! All right, let's let's deal with that guy. No more stalling. I think we've seen enough of them flying up and jumping. Let's just chip away his health with my boomerangs. This seems like it would be very annoying. It's like almost a stun lock for the enemies. And it's a slightly trollsome move on my part, I think. Get more guys here. Thankfully now that we've uh, really thinned out the crowd up here, this is nothing difficult. This place is like the death of you if you don't know how to handle it, because there's a shit ton of skeletons. And uh, most of them notice you at the same time thanks to the way the AI works in this game as I said before a whole bunch of them usually notice you at the same time and yeah so in this place you gotta be very careful and you should probably save unless you do an exploit like I just did with the skeletons and that pit and the boomerangs no you don't Alright, I could go directly here, but there is a kind of a strong enemy waiting before the stairs and I wanna at least take out someone around here without exposing myself to the stronger enemy hiding behind pillars here I don't think... think yes, I don't think I should be noticed There's a guy on the left, just shot a rain... rainbow? No uh, Lightning at me I'm going to deal with him in the most boring way possible but at least I'm not exposing myself to the line of sight of the more powerful guy and uh, the powerful guy is just the other version of the mages like the one that was the very first enemy I think we saw in the game the very very transparent one the dark really transparent one completely no almost invisible and these guys by now can cast their version of soul drink on me which is kind of unavoidable doesn't deal a lot of damage thankfully but uh, kind of annoying when there's a bunch of them I'm not actually sure they gain health back. If they do, it's not really significant because you could probably see how much damage our weapons deal. And uh, probably one swing from something powerful, which is to say not the boomerangs, but like that hammer that I was using for the beginning of the video. That probably negates like seven casts of that spell or five or something like that. Because it deals like what, 70 something I think or 50 something. Maybe I guess five casts around five cuts maybe I mean I could probably determine how much HP that spell takes away from me but I just want to take a wild guess and say that it's around 10 perhaps whatever maths not really fun or interesting and I'm on the verge of destruction I think unless I missed it while I was talking a lot I drink like one potion somewhere around here But the worst part of the catacombs is done, so I am not too afraid. And all this thing is actually better than the Razor Wind from Troop 2, because the Razor Wind liked to get stuck on geometry and it didn't want to return in your hand and you could not switch weapons. But this Boomer acts, I mean, if you switch weapons, it will hit you in the face and deal damage but at least it goes through everything like it cannot get stuck behind the walls it will just do a bunch of loud obnoxious noise but it will get to you wherever you are so that's a huge plus but it does way less damage than the razor ring because the razor ring can kill people in one hit so that was a plus oh man turf to fond memories here okay a bunch of guys here i think i'm approaching because i want to get that guy but what I was not counting on is everyone else who is coming out 
I think if you go around the other way first, you can deal with the less of them at once. And there's only that one last mage there with lightning left and you take him on one on one. But I wanted to be strategic and fancy and here I was almost kind of like... I was paralyzed and I slid down the slope right into the arms of these guys and thankfully I was able to evade any attacks. Also this is another way you can get the halberd, this guy obviously drops it. Remember I said those huge uh, brown clubs that the ogres wielded back in the, the Duskwood area? They were the only weapon that you can't really get from enemies. Yeah, here we go, drinking the potion. Actually, by the way, yeah, this is kind of cool. The axe, the movement is slowed down in slow mo, but the sound isn't. But yeah, um, remember I said those clubs are the only weapon the enemies don't drop because it appears to be glued to everyone's hands. And by glued, I of course mean glued. Uh, actually, I found one place in this entire game when you can get that weapon. And it's among the thousand freaking things that I found for the first time in my entire life in this game. Which will all be featured in the next update. So as I said, get hyped because the next update is going to like... Maybe not for you guys because you are seeing the game for the first time. And everything is equally new to you. Well, most of you I guess, maybe. But for me, that is the absolute hugest thing because I play this game beginning to end a lot of times in my life and I've been playing this game since I was a kid before internet before everything and there's a whole bunch of stuff like a ass load of stuff that I found all around the same place in the same time which I have never seen before and some of that stuff was pretty mind-blowing to me because I think even some well some all online like walkthroughs and stuff have no clue about that existing um, so yeah, that is going to be fun. I will be probably gushing about how cool it all is, but you guys probably, well, if I do a good job explaining, you will hopefully get my excitement, but might be that you will not get my excitement because, well, it's not the most obvious thing when you're just watching the entire game for the first time, just what is so cool about some of the stuff that I find there, but I will try my best. Right now we're fighting this chuckle fox here. I don't know why I'm saying that because you can see unless you're just not even watching anymore, just listening. And in here we find that, uh, well, I think one of these, like the, the guy in the back there, he's wielding the blade of hunger. And we find the vampiric shield in the chest down there in the dead end. So this place is the, the place where you want to go if you want some useless artifacts. But, I mean, they cost some money, you can sell them for a lot of profit, so that's kind of cool. Also, those uh, poison cloud things, the spells that these bigger guys shoot, uh, there's Blade of Hunger, they have splash damage and uh, I, am not, I will not demonstrate it in this update yet because there is no good opportunity for it, in the later ones of global and the future one there is. Uh, there's the shield, I'm gonna rearrange my inventory here for a bit, but as you can see everything is perfectly measured to be just enough space for everything that I want to carry because I'm such a pro but yeah, uh, what was I even saying? I was saying, well, my memory is garbage today I could probably do that in the theme of Silent Hill 1, but I am not going to. Um, something, something. Well, at least I want to say that the there is no like. Uh, ah, yeah, I remember now. Now there's two things I want to say before the episode ends. First of all, that thing has splash damage, and if you get some other enemies caught in the splash damage, like normal skeletons, you can actually discover that this game has infighting, which is also I didn't know it. I think. Lightning spell, by the way. This is like the one offensive spell that is kind of cool. I'm gonna throw some axes down there, but I will demonstrate the, the lightning as well because I fell here. And bam! Bam! Dead, dead. It's not too powerful, but it's very quick. And it's still kind of powerful enough to be considered useful, especially on lower difficulties. 
Here as you can see I used three of them and then only a couple hits with the axe and that guy was out. But yeah, so if you make the big guy hit one of the smaller ones with the splash damage from the poison cloud spell, the smaller guys would get mad and attack the big guy and the big guy will retaliate and there's going to be infighting like in Doom. And the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I, I, I don't know why I decided to bring it up, maybe in light of selling the useless artifacts, but uh, the prices of stuff are completely fixed in this game, so you will not lose any money by like buying, selling, buying, selling even the same thing over and over again. So this guy is still here panicking but talking very calmly. So there is never any disadvantage to buying something even if it's like an incremental upgrade and you will sell it at the next vendor and buy something even better because you will completely get all your money back for whatever you bought. So that's cool about this game. But yeah, next update. This is the end, by the way. Next update, first we go to the Citadel quickly to visit Celestia, tell her that we got the horn, receive our next orders, and then we will go to an optional area, which I never... well, I mean, I mean, the place is a pr place we visited before, but it's repurposed to be this optional area. You will see, you will see everything, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best update ever. Well, I don't know, for me. It's the most significant one, as I said. For you, it's probably going to be regular. But at least try to empathize with me here, guys. But for now, thank you for watching. See you next time and goodbye.